so much to Ikea for supplying our play area. The kids love it. They also love Dr. Marjorie Dixon. <laughs> we all do. Dr. Marjorie Dixon joins us now to talk about uh, shingles. Now, I love this topic because I don't understand everything around it, and we do get questions about it, so we thought we would talk a little bit about it. Get more in depth, because there's this relationship between chicken pox and shingles. What is it? How does it start? Okay, so Chicken pox is something, it's a pediatric illness that kids have. Yeah. So anybody who's had chicken pox is actually at risk of developing shingles. The fancy thing about chicken pox is that once you've had it, it doesn't entirely go away. So it remains dormant or sleeping in what's mm -hmm. called the dorsal root ganglia. So by your spine, there's a little area that the nerve comes out from, and there's, that's where the virus lives. Okay, and it lives there forever? It lives there forever, but then it can be reactivated, kind of like a wonder twin or like some <laughs> superhero. It comes back at an opportune time. So when I see it in reproductive age women, it's when they're totally stressed out, sometimes in the middle of a fertility treatment. So right. we never really know what the trigger is for it to happen, but when it happens, it's brutal. Because it comes back, it's not like it's chicken pox. Vengeance. Chicken pox, they itch, yeah. Yeah. and you get little dots. Yeah. But shingles, when they come back, what are you getting? What are you Pain. Thinking? So it starts, it's a, a sequence of things, and it happens in a fancy way that's like a shingle or, or a belt around your body. Mm. So um, the word shingle comes from the Latin singulum. That's for my high school Latin teacher. She'd be really proud because she told her when you yeah. go to med school, you need to use it, and then again it comes up. Yeah. So it presents itself like a belt or a girdle around, most commonly around your chest area, mm -hmm. but it can happen around your eye, your ear, your lower neck, legs or arms, and it hurts first. So two to three days before you get the rash, you get this painful. People describe it as it feels like someone's stabbing you from the inside in your skin. Ouch. Yeah, and burning. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of what we call a, a paresthesia, a weird feeling. You know something's going to happen. And then afterwards, the second stage of it is the rash part. So the rash part is, is vesicles. It's bubbles on your skin. Okay. So where it happens. And it appears in that band-like stripe, only on one half of your body. And that's because when the virus migrates back down the nerve, it distributes itself over a dermatome or over your skin in that pattern. So you get like a strip. You okay. feel like you've had a half of your body yeah. around your chest or around your eye. It's always in one little patch. Yeah. So some people will say, I've had, I had a couple bubbles once, and then it went away, and then I had this crazy pain and this huge exacerbation. And then it crusts over, like the chicken pox, it crusts over. Yeah. And then sometimes people have a third stage of it, which is complications of the, herp of the um, shingles, which they have post-herpetic neuralgia. So that means that the pain that they had associated with the shingles lasts long. So it can oh. last a month, it can last up to four months, it can last up to a year, and it's really debilitating for people. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's really problematic. So how is there anything you can do to make sure your chicken pox do not turn into shingles no. other than staying, uh, like, not stressing out? No. There's no. nothing you can do. No, if you've had chicken pox, I mean, you remember when we were little, now it's different because our kids had that vaccine, right? They have right? a vaccine. Right, so when we were little and you started having, I remember I was taken care of by a babysitter, a whole bunch of us after school, and when one of us had it, she's like, great, I'm gonna get all of you, you sit together, kiss <laughs> each other, love each other up, because everybody got it. So then right. once you got the chicken pox, you wouldn't get it again. Right. But we didn't know that eventually in our lives, then you're at risk, but not really when you're stressed out, yes, a little bit, Yeah. but the main prevalence in the population is in people who are in their 60s and 70s and 80s. Okay, yeah, so that's so coming actually at a vulnerable time in your life as well in exactly, terms of your health. Exactly, because your T cell immune, so your immune system mounts a response. Once you've seen it and then you see it again, your immune system should mount a response to it. Mm -hmm. But as we age, we've talked about menopause, we've talked about other things that happen to us, so we have less hormones around. Well, our T cell mediated immunity, our ability to fight is less. Right. So that's where it comes back. We see it a lot in 60s, 70s, and 80s. Mm -hmm. And the post-herpetic neuralgia, that, the bad part about shingles that causes a lot of pain and see, people seeing their family doctors and having to manage it, mm -hmm. that happens worse as you're older. Oh, so great. If you get, yeah, I know. So if Good you get shingles when you're young, it's easy. When you get shingles when you're older, it can be harder. Yes. So the doctor can prescribe antiviral medication for you. So that might help. So once you've had it, it may come back. Mm -hmm. Or then there is the opportunity for vaccination. Yeah. 
I want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So when are you eligible to get a vaccine that might protect you against shingles? So it depends on the jurisdiction, but now it's recommended by the, uh, the people who make regulations about immunizations in Health Canada. Mm -hmm. If you're 60 or greater, it's recommended that you do get the shingles vaccine. Why? Not because it's going to prevent you from getting shingles. You may get it anyway. If you've had chicken pox, you're entitled to develop shingles at some point. Okay. However, if you do get it, then the exacerbation of illness or the, the severity of illness yeah. will be less if you've had this shingles vaccination. And then also, there are some people who've never had chicken pox, right? So I've had it. I don't know if you've had I've had chicken, chicken pox, okay, yeah. you've had chicken pox. A lot of people have had chicken pox, but some people haven't. Right. So you know that there are some adults that you went to school with, even in university, they're like, I've never had chicken pox. So if you know anybody who has chicken pox, or I see people who are trying to get pregnant um, or who have never had chicken pox in their life, they want to know, am I at risk? Well, if someone has active shingles and they have the vesicles and they're weeping and scratching and doing all that, if you have never had the chicken pox, you are at risk of getting it. So, so how does it spread? It spreads by aerosol, so it, if it, the droplets come from it, or by direct transmission, oh, right? Wow. So it's a communicable illness, and it's mm -hmm. important for people. If you are 60, 70, or 80, and you live in an institution, for example, if you're in a nursing home yes. with a bunch of other seniors around you where their T cell immu immunity is lower, that's why it's recommended. And then if you're in your 50s and you have chronic illness, you can request it. So if you know the that vaccine. your immune system, yeah, if your immune system is low, you can request having it. But it's a new thing. And it's mm -hmm. reasonable for people to think about getting it because when you get shingles, it's very debilitating. Mm, talk to your doctor, Dr. Dixon. That is really good information. Thank you for that. Let's go to break. We've got one coming up. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah.